Okay, my last one's called Hot Dog Story. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love a good hot dog story, sure. no matter what. Who doesn't? All right, Minnesota 317, Karen jokingly asked Georgia for a hot dog hometown story. <laughs> Remember that? Uh, no. Me neither. I just... <laughs> I grew up in the very rural, very sleepy town of Earliesville, Virginia. Earliesville used to have one grocery store in 2008. It has none now. <laughs> it's very oh. sleepy. Yeah. Oh. This rural grocery store was known for its strange decorations, and the best slash worst one was Harry the Hot Dog. A <laughs> six foot tall, 200 pound anthropomorphic hot dog, you've seen this one, statue with arms and legs that was squirting ketchup and mustard on itself <laughs> and licking its lips <laughs> like it was getting ready to eat itself. We've all seen the statue, right? Yes, that's right. So I creepy. Think it's- <laughs> Internet famous. Okay, Harry the hot dog sat right outside the entrance to the store. He was something of a celebrity around those parts for his creepiness because there wasn't much else to talk about unless you're super into cows and corn. (laughs) Wait, I am. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. When you went to do your shopping, the key was to not make eye contact with Harry because you would immediately be turned off from buying or eating any food. (laughs) But one dark day, Harry the hot dog disappeared. He weighed 200 pounds and someone had managed to kidnap him from the grocery store entrance without being caught. (laughs) A few days after his kidnapping, the owner of the store bought a small two-foot replica of Harry the hot dog and placed it in the store with a sign that said, have you seen my daddy? (laughs) (laughs) The store owner sounds pretty rad, right? Yes. They named Harry's son Little Frank. The owner offered a reward for Harry's safe return, but he was still missing for 27 days until the police received an anonymous tip on his whereabouts. He was found buried in a wooded area outside of a trailer park. Oh my God. His arms, ketchup, and mustard bottles included were broken off and never found. Why? He was completely battered and covered in dirt and grime. I don't know. That's so horrible. (laughs) Despite Harry looking even scarier than before the kidnapping, the owner of the grocery store proudly displayed the buried alive, zombified, limbless hot dog (laughs) next to his son, Little Frank. Little Frank had a new sign that said something like, I'm so happy my daddy is back. Mm -mm. (laughs) Despite Harry's unfortunate new condition, it was beautifully heartwarming to have the creepy family reunited. The owner also pledged to rebuild Harry's limbs and turn him into a, quote, bionic hot dog, Bigger, faster, stronger. (laughs) The police identified suspects and there were some amazing quotes about the investigation in the local paper, such as, quote, the alleged wiener nappers can expect a tough grilling by police. Boo. (laughs) If I remember correctly, the police did catch the perpetrators and they were brought to hot dog justice. (laughs) The store eventually closed and I don't know what happened to the hot dog father and son, but I hope they are still out there somewhere keeping Earliesville weird. Stay sexy and don't kidnap giant hot dog men away from their hot dog sons in a town where the police have nothing better to do. <laughs> Love, Rachel. Rachel, the idea that you just introduced the concept of hot dog justice into my world <laughs> is something I will always be grateful to you for. 